Howdy guys, I'm Jason, and today in the Auto Edits Garage, we're back on the Tahoe, and there is a ton of stuff to catch you up on on this thing. You're gonna freak out when you see the underneath, and we're gonna install some of the strongest steering components I've ever seen in my life, the Kryptonite Death Grip Kit. Now, I learned about this kit from you guys in my other video. You guys said, hey, you got, you're having steering problems, get Kryptonite stuff. Um, it's amazing components, so we're gonna break these things out. I'm gonna catch you up on all the stuff here, and let's get this stuff installed. So let's start off this video with showing off the before and after or the uh, stock parts to the upgraded parts because it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, now this you may consider overkill for a build like this, for an overlander, but this is literally military grade Hummer H1 Alpha center link style steering bar on this thing. It, it's it's heavy. I mean, it's obvious the difference between those two things. Um, and then we have the kryptonite death grip tie rods that will go outside on either end of those. All billet goodness here. You want to make sure that you have the notch on the outside. Now, the only thing that you're not seeing here is the death grip Pitman arm that I also ordered for this thing. It's already installed because I ordered an uh, upgraded steering box. I got a redhead new steering box because the whole thing that, you know, uh, inspired this upgrade was the fact that on that long road trip up to Tahoe, it was just, mm -hmm. the steering was so, so sloppy that it just was just exhausting to drive for eight hours on, on the highway. And so this is going to solve all of that. Now this is definitely overkill for this application. Um, this is designed for big power diesel truck type suspension, hard four wheel drive launches. Matter of fact, one of the things I loved, as soon as I started doing research on the Kryptonite brand, uh, their warranty is we dare you to break it, go ahead, try. They have a warranty, if you break it, they replace it. So when a company does that, that's kind of rad in the sense that they're obviously confident in their parts and they just get it you know they want people to get out and use the stuff and and do what you're going to do now the reasoning for me in a camping overland type vehicle why go overbuild and put something this high-end this expensive under the front end of this thing it's because sometimes when you can do that you can put this component in and then just forget about it it's like when i put the tom woods drive shafts in my jeep i upgraded to the 1350 joint u joints and that was just because even though that's heavier duty than what i normally wheel it's just that peace of mind so this will give me that peace of mind that i even though i'm running 35s on this thing which is a bit more advanced than this was designed to handle this just takes this out of the equation it's all going to just be bullet reliable extremely tough and I can't wait to drive it in C. These tie rods on the Chevys are no are a known entity to bend, break, and be a problem area. So it's obvious the difference here, this is my arm and then this is like, you know, uh, the Rock's arm right here. So we've got a Dwayne Johnson and then a Auto Edits Jason right there. So that's your that's your good example of uh, gun show on the steering. And here it gives you an idea of some of the other suspension pieces on this thing. These are the lower ball joints. You think those were worn out? What do you think? I think these were worn out. That, that was junk. Pretty much everything on the front of this thing was like that, which leads me to, come on under, let me show you what we've done. Now, I don't know if any of you guys can relate to the while I'm there mentality. Uh, it can really get you in trouble, me especially, because while I was in here, I kept seeing all of these other things, like those ball joints were worn out, the bushings were worn out, the shocks were junk, the bump stops were gone. And I just kept thinking, while I'm here, while I'm here, and the funny thing about these vehicles is that the parts are just cheap enough like everything the magic number is around like $65 the ball joints the lower ball joints were $65 the uh, bushings for the a arms are $65 you know and so it just it adds up after a while but it was an affordable rebuild so basically I did what I did to the truck with without all that fancy icon stuff um, I went through and there's a combination of Mevotech stuff there's some AC Delco like the bushings in the lower control arms 
Now I went with the Beltec Street Performance shocks on this thing. I was just such a fan of the valving and what they do there that I went ahead and, and we're gonna give those a try on here. It's a cost effective yet a definite upgrade from um, where we were before. And went ahead and just rebuilt the entire front suspension on this thing. So everything uh, bushing wise, ball joint wise, the front axle shafts, everything's brand new. Uh, wire wheeled everything. And that was another exercise on this vehicle for me. It's I tend to go overboard with the cleaning. This one, I promised myself I'm not doing a restoration. I'm just doing a cleanup. So you guys ask what kind of paint I use often. And this is what I've been using lately. It's the Duplicolor Semi-Gloss Black Acrylic Enamel Premium. I'll put this on all of these things on my Amazon store so you guys can just find them or go to your local parts store. Uh, Lucas has changed Toolbox Buddy now to penetrating oil. Same stuff, I find. Uh, it's just called this and has a different dispenser, but it's amazing. I spray everything down with this stuff. Uh, it's still my go-to for just coating and protecting and cleaning and breaking bolts free. And then I use some of the Lucas. Uh, and now I also change. I'm using the parts cleaner and degreaser. They also make a brake cleaner. I just find that these cans are lasting me a little bit longer per. They're a little bit more per can, but I feel like I get more mileage out of them. So I swap to these things right now. So these are the tools that I use in a wire wheel. Oh gosh, I can't even believe I forgot. Super clean. This stuff right here worked wonders. There were so many oil leaks there again while I was here. The oil lines that go from the radiator to the oil filter adapter housing, it's a tradition on these things. They just leak and it has been coating the front suspension. And so there was multiple leaks up here. So the power steering was leaking. The oil was leaking out of the oil cooler lines. Um, so I just replaced all of that stuff. So I even replaced the the seal on the oil filter adapter housing. So that's all new, new lines, new fittings, everything's tight, shouldn't have any more leaks for a while, which will be great. And then I sprayed it down with this stuff and just wire brushed it and it cleaned up really nice. And then I went through and rattle can restored this basic stuff. So that was a, a, a kind of a test to me was to not feel like I had to make it perfect. And that's the whole point here is just to make this a very reliable, long range camping vehicle. You know, there's been some changes around here. We'll talk about in another video, but um, uh, <laughs> my vehicle count has changed and uh, we won't get into that in this video, but this is now my long range uh, vehicle. And not that the Jeep can't, but I just like an American V8 highway cruiser like my truck. Finally in the front, I, all I did was I went and bought one of those um, cheap Amazon two inch lift kits. So I put new lift keys and that I should explain, I have a black eye or I'm healing from a black eye because while I was putting those keys in, one fell out and hit me in the cheek and I'm still healing up from my little black eye. They're heavy, those little suckers. Uh, so in the front, I got some torsion keys. We're just gonna do a little tweak. So. I think it was 180 bucks maybe for the whole, you know, for two keys for the torsion bars and then two inch blocks for the rear. So let me know in the comments if you guys have ever had the while I'm here, I might as well fix the other syndrome because man, it gets out of hand fast. So let's go ahead and install some kryptonite goodness in this thing. All right, so to say this thing is beefy is like an understatement. I mean, jeez, please. Now, oh, I forgot to mention that all of that stuff, I put a new idler arm on over here, the Bevotech idler arm. So it's got all that. And then the only other thing to remember on this is that it actually has a provision for a steering stabilizer because it's designed mostly for the heavier duty trucks that have all that stuff. So I'll go ahead and get that in place. Let's get some nuts on that so it doesn't fall on my face. Because this thing right here, will do some damage, it's heavy. Okay, and those get torqued to 46 foot-pounds. And this one will just line up the cotter key. So that's it for the monster center link. Let's get the tie rods. Oh. Now, the one thing you do before you install the tie rod ends is actually put a little anti-seize out here on the end of these things where they screw in 
to the adjuster sleeves here because if moisture gets inside there and these rust, then they seize up and then there's just no more adjustment. That's no good. So you just do a little bit of preventive anti-seize goodness on the threads here and put these back together. All right, so let's get them installed. So we're ready to install this thing and the only thing you have to be aware of at the moment is that the left hand thread side, which is the side that they conveniently put a notch in right here for us, goes to the steering knuckle, goes outside. So on both sides, you make sure that the notch, the left hand thread goes outside and then you could just go ahead and let's get this in place. Now what I've done is I've got the steering turned all the way to the left at the moment to get this thing on. So what I'll do is I'll get inside started. We'll get the, the outside started. This one has a washer and a castle nut. The inside has just a locker. And we'll just get that snug down. And these just go to 46 foot pounds as well. Now on the inside one here, since it's, I don't have that all the way in, a trick here is to just take a, this is a 5 16 and a three quarter. And the 5 16 will hold the ball joint in place while you tighten it, keep it from spinning. The inside I can't quite get the socket on to torque it, so I'll have to do it with my calibrated elbow. And that seems to be about exactly 46 foot pounds. And then we'll put our cotter key in here. I'm gonna do a quick preliminary adjust because I know that that's gonna be towed in too far. We won't do the final adjustment, but boy, look at how cool that is just to have this nice beefy center section to adjust. It's gonna be easy to set the control or set the toe, the alignment, even for just the eyeball in the garage here. Now what I'll do is set the wheel to straight and get a look at it. on the passenger side, I noticed that the actual ball joint stud went far enough to where it actually touched or hit the, uh, this would be the sway bar mounting bracket. And so I ended up having to just take a little bit off of that after I got it tight. And I just took an angle grinder with a, a, a disc and just made a quick cut on that thing. Plenty of room there now. We'll run it through its travel and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. But so that's a heads up on this particular, uh, on the 95, what, K1500s and Tahoes. That could be a, something, but it took me literally all of 30 seconds to solve that. I probably got a little aggressive. So there you have it. You are now caught up on the Tahoe project. You know exactly the direction and what we're doing with it for now. And we just did a monster upgrade with some amazing product, like just the strongest steering stuff possible uh, is in place. Now, all I have to do is just grease the Zerk fittings. And once we get it on the ground, we'll do the alignment. Wow, right? now.